Hey y'all, it's your girl Ginger Snaps. And listen, I was sitting here, you know, on the verge of tears because I was going over my monthly budget and I was just like, life is just so hard. It's like, I feel like everyone is just living paycheck to paycheck. We are just burdened with just all these, you know, these, these financial woes and you know, especially like being a parent, I was just, I don't know. I was just really, um, just filled with anxiety. And then I said, you know what? Something in me said, don't focus on the bad things, focus on what's good, try to help others. And then my mind went to last month where early in May, my student loans were forgiven. And so I thought, okay, let me, you know, if I could help instead of wallowing in self-pity, let me see if I can help any one person. I'm a small channel. I know this, but if any one person can get help from me sharing my experience, that's a win. A win is a win. So let me tell you, you know, how I went about to get my student loans forgiven. Um, I had like $67,000 forgiven. So that's a huge burden off my back. Listen, I was just elated. I was a little, you know, skeptic. Like I was skeptical. I went and checked. I kept checking for days and days and it still said, (laughs) it still said your loans are forgiven. It still said it. So I said, all right, this is, this is legit, you know? And it's, I had a message. It said, um, forgiven under the Biden, uh, Harris, um, I guess, student loan forgiveness. Let me see if I could stick it in just to show y'all proof. So this is, um, how it looks. Uh, wait, where am I? Y'all I'll be, bu- okay. See, yeah, here we go. Congratulations. The Biden Harris administration has forgiven your student loans, blah, blah, blah. Um, and from what I know, okay, I'm going to be speaking to the people who are either in public service or have had their loans for over 20 years that I fall under that, um, category. So my story is, you know, I'm in the healthcare, I'm in tech, like healthcare industry and um, hospitals. So that qualifies as public service. And that's one of the, um, um, one of the most popular ways to get your student loans, uh, forgiven. And so I remember I was at work, Um, I want to say this had to be like the end of last year, the end of 2023. And I saw um, one of my ex's um, family members at at work. And, you know, we were just catching up. And um, and you know what's funny? I hadn't seen her for a while. And so she popped into my mind and I was like, Oh, I haven't seen so-and-so in, in, in a minute. Where's she been? And then I, I kid you not, listen, God works in mysterious ways. I kid you not. Two weeks later, I saw her and I told her, Hey, I've been thinking about you. Where you been? And then, you know, she was telling me, you know, she's happy now. And you know, she, she had gone through a lot in her life, but things were looking up and she was like, guess what? I said, what? She's like, and, and I just got my uh, student loans forgiven. I said, what? How? Um, and she said, listen, I just, so she told me that she consolidated. Those are one of the major things that must happen to fall, um, into the forgiveness, uh, cycle. Your loans have to be consolidated. So she told me they were consolidated and then she went and applied for the public service loan forgiveness. You have to apply for that because the government does not know what industry you work in. So she told me that, and she told me all her student loans were transferred to Mohila. So Mohila is the, well, not anymore, but as of a couple of months ago, Mohila was the student loan servicer that, um, focuses on public service loan forgiveness. It was Mohila. Now I think the, um, FSA, FSA is the financial student aid. That's like the main, that's the government. That's who, um, gives out money, you know, federal student loans. They're the, um, government servicer. And that, so they control all the student loans. And then you have servicers like Mohila, like Sally May. Um, who else? Um, you have edu 
edu something edu that's another uh, servicer um another servicer i know of i used to have nelnet that's another servicer that's who i was with for the longest I had Nelnet. And then so I went and did what she told me to. I went to the public student loan forgiveness like website, the location. It's under federal student aid. Let me share my screen so you guys can see the website. And anyone with student loans, you need to have this website. You need to sign up for it. No matter how old your loans are, they control all the history of the loans. So let's go to... All right, let's see where we at. Where are we? So you have to go to this website, right? And you need to log in or create an account or whatever. I already had an account, so you log in. And then you go to loan forgiveness, public service loan forgiveness. And this has been around since George Bush. However, the program was so shitty. It was so bad um, that I, I practically gave up. I thought I would just be sitting here with this. Actually, my principal was 45,000. I had some undergrad and then some of my master's degree and interest blew it up to like 67,000. So you need to go here, you log in, and then you have to search for your employer right here. Um, this will tell you if your employer qualifies um, for the public student loan forgiveness. Usually they're 501 c is non-for-profit. So if you're a police um, officer, if you're a nurse, I believe if you're a teacher, if you're a healthcare worker at all, any non-for-profit, you can get student loan forgiveness through um, the PSLF program. So now the um, President Biden, they have put in place many... Um, fixes to the program to make it easier to be forgiven because I knew about the program, but you had to just jump through hoops. Originally, the program was you had to make 120 payments. You had to make 120 student loan payments that equals to 10 years. And then your loans were automatically forgiven. So I've been working towards that. But then my issue was I would have kids, I'd get pregnant, and then I'd go part-time. And I believe you can only be working full-time, making payments. There are times where I put my loans in deferment too. You, It doesn't count under deferment. So even if you tried to make payments during deferment or you were working part-time, that did not qualify towards the 10 years or 120 payments. So I had just about given up. Well, usher in COVID, y'all. Do you know what COVID did? Listen, COVID was really, it was not a good situation for the whole world. But there was a silver lining in many ways during COVID. In many ways, um, COVID turned out to be a good thing for some people. So due to COVID and due to people, you know, um, losing their jobs, losing income, losing salaries, not going to work, people sitting at home. If you guys remember, the government put in a, a student loan payment pause for three years. So for three years, no interest was accruing and nobody had to make student loan payments. All right. So now, okay, so that helped. But the problem is now student loans are resuming OK, and a lot of people are not making the money that they used to or, you know, the costs of living has gone up exponentially. People can't make these student loan payments. I've seen people with I thought I had a lot. There are people out there with three hundred, four hundred thousand, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in student loans with payments that are equal to like child care or like a mortgage or a rent payment. So now that's why Biden. um they have tried to come up with ways to get your student loans forgiven and try to um, come up with ways to improve the PSLF program, especially to improve different programs that already existed. The problem is he ran into many roadblocks because you have a lot of these Republicans who are Basically, they're like, no, taxpayers shouldn't absorb, you know, the student loan debt and this and that. Well, you know what's not fair is that college basically was 
was cheap. College was not as expensive back then as it used to be. I hear a lot of boomers who complain, who are like, no, we shouldn't have to pay a student loan or absorb the, the cost or the forgiveness. Well, yeah, you do. Because I remember even one of my coworkers, um, he told me he went back to, he went to school in the early eighties. He was able to work comfortably and pay all of his uh, tuition, no student loans. Um, none of my older coworkers have student loans, none of them at all, because college was more affordable. Fast forward to today, I, I'm still, I don't know how I'm gonna put my kids through school. We're gonna have to come up with creative ways. The average school now is like, what, $80,000 a year? When I went to school, um, and I went to a private college. It was 20,000 a year, a private college. The state schools were like $8,000 a year, $8,000. Now these schools are 40, 50, 60,000 plus, which now I'm second guessing for my kids. I'm probably looking at, I'm um, first of all, my goal is to have them take as much college credits as they can. Then maybe go to a community college. And then transfer because you know what? A lot of the hype around college is, oh, senior year, where you going? That doesn't matter anymore because now as we're adulting, adulting ain't cute. And I'm trying to instill that in my kids right now. Adulting ain't cute. Don't worry about who's going where, who's going here, the excitement and, you know, the letters and it. No, because that's four fleeting years. You still have the rest of your life. I rather put money into them building a portfolio and, and owning a home rather than now you have a lot of these Gen Z, some of us millennials as well, but these Gen Z's who can't purchase homes because they're drowning in student loan debt. They can't even start a family. Do y'all know childcare is like, uh, like $2,000 a month for daycare? So Imagine someone 25 years old starting out um, with student loan debt. When I graduated, I believe when I started that when I got married and I was I began adulting, I think my student loans were like 300 a month. I had two toddlers. Child care was maybe 12, 1300 a month. And I had a mortgage at that time and I was married. So even for us older millennials, it's not crazy. A lot of us older millennials too, I'm an 83 baby. We bought homes. I bought my home in 2010. The interest rate wasn't crazy. The, the, the home value wasn't crazy. Now home values, the average is four or 500,000. Like how? Now, how are these Gen Z kids going to do it? How? And minimum wage now is 16, $17 an hour. That's not cutting it. Now you'd need over 50, $60 an hour. But I digress. Anyhow, back to student loan forgiveness. So, okay. So um, Biden had to find loopholes, but legally, because everything he tried to do um, was basically sabotaged by the Republicans. But the PSLF, the public student loan, they can't really do much because that's been that's already been enacted. In you know, it's already been on the books, so to speak, by Bush. Um, so they couldn't really do that. So what Biden did was he revamped it to make it easier. So I applied and I got all my jobs certified. You know what, guys? Thank you, God. Instead of complaining, I won't complain. I will focus on the goodness of the Lord. I went through a lot while I was married. Um, I had to keep going part-time and part-time with the kids and because my ex, you know, couldn't handle them. I went part-time a lot. Every full-time job I had, I eventually went part-time because my home life was in shambles. But you know what's so good? I had enough full-time. I had enough full-time um, hours on the books to get me to be qualified for student loan forgiveness. You need 120 quote-unquote payments or you need 120 months that you were, you qualified for repayment. So I had to go back to all of my jobs I had 
and you have to fill you have to fill out that form in that tool. There's a form after you get your jobs qualified, then you fill out a tool, uh, uh, um, like a form, and you you put down the dates that you were employed, and then the name of the employer and all that. So then that gets sent electronically to your your um, employer, old and current employers. Then they will sign off on the dates you were employed, on all the months you were employed. So I had like four different PSLF applications from different places. And I remember, I and I am a records keeper. So I went back in all my emails at the time, periods of times where I was full-time, I put it on there and then the employers kicked it. They signed it and it kicks back into the system. And so now the public student loan servicer, which was Mohila at the time, now it could be another company. They're, they're changing things. Then they will count the months. They will count the months that um, you were employed as full-time and that counts towards your 120. The good thing is this is what you guys need to understand because I was in doubt. That's why I never went and applied. I kept hearing, oh, student loan, student loan forgiveness. Listen, I wasted so much time. This has been in the works, y'all, since 2022. I ignored it because I knew, oh, I was full-time, that part-time, then I had breaks and I was, you know, um, I didn't make payments because I was in deferment. Do y'all know that Biden made it where even if you were in def deferment, that it still counts? It still counts, y'all. So if you were ever in deferment and you worked for a nonprofit, as long as you were on the books as full time, even if you didn't make any payments, it still counts as a payment, y'all. Listen to me closely. It still counts as, an, as, as a payment. There are stretches where I was in deferment for so long, it still counted towards my 120 quote unquote payments. That's why I'm urging y'all, do not walk, run. There was a deadline um, for like end of April. They've currently has, have pushed it to end of June. So another thing with the PSLF, and um, I'll tell you about another uh, way for forgiveness. Um, another thing too is, you know, a lot of us have all these different loans, all these crazy loans. You got federal loans, you got private loans, you got FFEL loans. That was an old school uh, federal student loan. The FFEL, unsubsidized. Listen, what you have to do, let me see if I can share my screen. You need to go get your loans consolidated, okay? All your loans, just get them consolidated. So I had a whole bunch of loans right after I finished my master's, I consolidated them into federal loans. Um, I, I consolidated them. And when you consolidate them, now they have different income-based repayment plans now with the federal government or income driven repayment. Now, the only thing I would be careful of is if your payment is low now, it may go higher. I'm not sure. But if you are able to swing the payments and you have the qualified time or you're close to being in 120 months, they call them qualifying months. If you're close to having 120 months of full-time employment, and by the way, the full-time is 32 hours and up, I believe or 30 hours and up. I would, listen, if your payments go higher, but it means you only have three, four more months or six more months or a year, and you have over like $100,000, I would suck it up, consolidate your loans, see if you can pay those months, just a few months. That's what people are doing. And then it'll get forgiven. And if you overpay, they will refund you. I overpaid a month. They refunded it to me they refunded it. So that's one way. 10 years, right? Because I graduated college 06, uh, but I'm not at 20 years yet. So because I work for a 501c3 and I have 120 months of full-time work, not necessarily payments, full-time work, your, I'm telling you right now, your student loans will get forgiven. Just go to the website, See if your employer um, qualifies. See if your past time qualifies. They will get forgiven. That I didn't think it would happen. I got that email on, on I believe, May the 4th. 
they were forgiven. Now, the other way to get it forgiven, as I understand it, is um, if your loans are 20 to 25 years old, they can also be forgiven. Um, again, I believe you have to, again, get your loans consolidated, y'all. Go to the website, and there's a way where you go next to your loans. Um, I think you go, there's a button, there's an option. You either go to the FSA website or go to your servicer. It could be Mohila, Edu, Sist, or whatever that's called, or Nelnet, or um, Sally May, or whoever, uh, Naviant, sorry. Um, and then go inquire about getting them consolidated because the Biden administration, they're looking for loans that are consolidated. I cannot stress that enough. They're looking to see if you're consolidated. So I was already consolidated and then they enrolled me in the save plan. The save plan is one of the income driven repayments. All right. The save plan. Um, and also you do, for those three years that we were not, um, we did not need to make payments during COVID those 36 months, you guys count towards your 120 months. Y'all that's free money. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to say? Those three years. So those three years I didn't pay. And there's a tracker too. That'll tell you 78 payments, 79 payments. I remember when I added my current job, it said I was at 78 months of payments. That's what it said. Then I kept adding more. And that included the 36 months, I believe of COVID. So they're giving you credit during COVID for payment. As I added all my jobs and it shot up, I think I was at 142 months, something like that. It shot up and it was forgiven. So the other way, like I said, is, um, hold on, let me see, is the 20 years. So here we are. So IDR, Income Driven Loan Forgiveness Information. When can I receive forgiveness? So the save. So this is an income driven repayment plan. And I was on here on this plan. You need to be on any IDR to even be considered or looked at. If you're still, if all of your student loans are still like fragmented and all over the place, some people will have like freaking like 16 different loans, just get them consolidated. They will roll them all into like different groups. I had two, mine were, mine were consolidated into two groups. So that's what you need to do. The pay as you earn, the income-based repayment. So after 20 years, if you're on an income-based repayment and your student loans are 20 years old, they're going to get forgiven. See, after 25 years of qualifying repayment, if you're not a new borrower on or after July 1st, 2024, oh, 2014. So these are the, go to this website, y'all. So any payment plan, and these, see, so mine, my loans were consolidated and they were turned into direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans, direct plus loans. Those are um, parent plus loans. I believe these are the types of loans you can't have like the Perkins or the FFEL. You need to re you need to consolidate them and it'll turn into this. You see that from the FFEL program, the direct plus loan. Read this, y'all. These are the loans that will qualify. You need, again, and I, I can't stress this enough, you need to consolidate. And the deadline, I believe, is June 30th of this year. How much forgiveness can I get? Under all four plans, any remaining loan balance is forgiven if your federal student loans aren't fully repaid at the end of the repayment period. There is no limit on how much forgiveness you receive as long as you meet these requirements. So you can have a hundred, a hundred thousand. If you're on year 18, anybody who's like on year 18 now, go consolidate, just make those payments under the consolidation plan. And in two years, your loans will be forgiven. Well, side note, provided if Biden is still in office, we don't know what's going to happen, but anywho, that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, 
If you are 21 years in and you've neglected your loans, I know there are programs out there to make your loans current and consolidated, and they will give you credit for not that, not for paying, because a lot of people have not paid their student loans, but for the times that it's been in repayment. So get it right. You need to get it in good standing. Then they will just give you credit. They will just say you were in repayment for these years. They will give you credit. They will forgive it. They will forgive it, especially under the PSLF. Even if you um, were under, um, what do you call it? Deferment. I think for the 20, 25 years too, if you deferred at any time, they will count it. So, oh man, it's, it's a lot of information and it was confusing, but I'm glad I heard from someone just in passing to do this. And I said, let me give it a shot. And mine were forgiven within a few months. That's why now I'm passing the information on to you. I'm trying to let everyone know because I didn't believe it at first. I ignored it. This has been in, in, in stated since like 2022. Then I heard, you know, you watch the news a lot. And then you hear, you know, oh, the Republicans um, um, got it thrown out in Supreme Court. Yes, you have to understand certain certain um, loopholes Biden tried to get were thrown out. Like they were going to give us like 10 or 20,000 that got thrown out, but because that was something he just made up just to throw money at people to forgive their loans, you know? So they got that thrown out, but the PSLF and the 20 to 25 years, these are things that have been proposed and they are on the law books and lo there are loopholes. We, we don't widely know about so listen, each one teach one. I'm sharing this information with you. I just want us all to be smart, to have burdens lifted off of our shoulders. Like I said, borrowers with certain non-direct loans, these are what they are getting consolidated into direct loans. You need to do this by June 30th, 2024. And then after that, they're going to start counting your months, all right? your time and repayment. They will count it and then they will give you credit. Okay. And then it will lead to forgiveness. The only thing I'm, I have to tell you guys is, um, if you were in school at all, that's not going to count. I was in school, um, for my master's as well. They didn't count that. And that's in school deferment. They will not count that. So if you were in school at any time getting your master's or you went back for a second degree, those months will not count. Just keep that in mind. Um, we already went over public service loan forgiveness. And um, he, he, these are other obscure situations where your loans can be discharged. So this is a borrower defense. A lot of people, what is this? This is if your school closed down due to fraud or it was one of those IT, not, oh man, I don't want to diminish the name of ITT tech, but remember Phoenix, University of Phoenix, those for-profit schools. If you went to one of those, you can get your student loan. Um, you can get it uh, forgiven as well. Yeah, here's borrower defense. If they believe their school misled them or lied to them about something central to their decision. Um, again, that was if you were coerced or they made false promises, you can get it uh, forgiven. Then we have the teacher loan forgiveness. Um, you may be eligible for forgiveness of up to 17500 if you teach full time for five complete and consecutive academic years. But again, I think you can also get PSLF too. You may not receive a benefit under, oh, see, there you go. So a lot of schools are part of the city. They're board of education, non-for-profit. So you can either get the teacher loan forgiveness or PSLF. I guess it depends. So listen, I implore, all right, that you guys run, whoever has student loans in default, get it in right standing. If you worked for a non-for-profit, or if your student loans are in 20 years repayment. So maybe you graduated in like the nineties or something or the early two thousands. Yeah. Um, just look into it, please. I did not believe it. I ignored all the news. Meanwhile, your home girl was sitting here with eligible student loans that were, that were eligible for forgiveness. So go check it out. Y'all let me know. Okay.
Good luck, you guys. And listen, each one teach one. We have to have each other's backs. All right. Bye.